Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 53. Yes, 53 episodes of me talking to you guys. So, I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Hello, Norman. How are you? I'm okay. It's another Sunday. Really? No. Was it much better than the previous Sunday? Oh, not really. I mean, last Sunday I spent the whole day sleeping after I crashed after our meetup. Oh, uh, yes. Tell me about it. I, I had to wake up at 8 a.m. just to have hotel breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> at least you had a hotel breakfast. I had to cook my own breakfast. I mean, you get to wake up late. I have to wake up at 8 a.m. and the breakfast wasn't even worth it. <laughs> you mean they don't have room service? No, that's an extra <laughs> charge. Uh, anyway, we don't have a guest for this week because we felt lazy. Well, I technically I did and I couldn't get one, so I'm just making up excuses as I go. Um, <laughs> so well, anyway. We have plenty of content for you this week, especially to recap about what we did last week. And if you came, thank you for coming. If you didn't come and what fun you missed out on. Yes, yes, all, all the funds, the funds, all of the fun that you could have had. Uh, and all of the derps, and all of the derps, all oh, of yes. them. All of them. Uh, okay, so anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is housekeeping. In today's housekeeping, we would like to thank everyone that attended the first MBS show meetup. And also the live show. We had a lot of fun and can't wait for the next time we do it again. So when will that be, Norman? Next year or anytime sooner? Well, for the anniversary, obviously, it's going to be next year. But <laughs> I'm thinking might, we might do it sometime in the future for other meetups. Uh, maybe yeah. A C2H, A2 whatever it is. There, there's a lot, right? There's a lot. Oh, yes, plenty. And I'm sure, you know, everyone's looking forward to a great meetup. It was a great meetup, everyone. Thank you all for coming. And for all of you, Kim, you made it really, really awesome. Yes, indeedy. And if you would like to view our live episode, it is available. You can look at it in our stream. If you can't download it using your current podcast reader, if you're using iTunes, it shouldn't be a problem. But if you're using some other service, then you can watch it on our YouTube channel, The MBS Show. Or head on over to awards.thembsshow.com and we have embedded the player right there for you. Awesome. Well, that was a derpy recording if I remember right. Oh, well, it still worked out pretty well. And for all of you who won awards in the MBS Show Awards, your certificates are on their way. And for those of you who we don't have the mailing addresses for, your certificates have arrived in your emails. Go and check them and enjoy your certificates. Oh, double check your spam mail. It could go in there for Yeah, because apparently. you might probably fall in with those Reader's Digest competitions that you get. <laughs> oh, that's no fun. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. In today's news time, Pony Toys at Burger King, Germany. If you remember right, a while back there were rumors that Burger King were going to sell pony swags. Now we have a confirmation and the rumors are true. Burger King are going to sell pony swags in Germany. Yes, Burger King Germany is going to give out My Little Pony and Tonka, known for their signature toy trucks, with every kid's meal. The ponies that Burger King will be giving out are Twilight Sparkle, Fluttershy, and Pinkie Pie. If you are in Germany, you can expect to see them in Burger King starting March 4th. Links can be found in the show notes. And then, what do you think, Burger King? I didn't know that Burger King gave out toys with their meals because they don't do that here. I'm not sure. I I live in um, the south in Johor and we live pretty close to Singapore and we can get Singapore channels. Um, where I'm digressing. Oh, I'm I'm not telling you the whole story, right? Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, um, I remember a while back when I was younger, they had Burger King ads on TV stating out that oh, there's kids meal at Burger King and stuff, but That was a long time ago. And I'm not sure. Uh, I do kind of remember them having toy meals or kids meals, something like that. But it, it's not well known. I'm not 100% sure on that. Well, they probably retired it because um, Burger King only opened in my neighborhood when I was about a teenager and they couldn't survive either. But still, why are the other countries getting the toys? Yeah, I don't know. Could be more popular there. You have to remember that Pony are uh, localized there. So they have... German-speaking ponies. And if I remember right, one of our 
I won't say guess, but one of our live audience said that German Fluttershy is cute. Fluttershy is cute if you find anywhere except for Pony.mov. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, hey. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it's really interesting to see that other fast food chains are getting the Pony toys. Um, and Dust Princess. <laughs> yes. But I, I think that if we're lucky, McDonald might be carrying some of the old ones here. Or if not, KFC or who else has toys yeah, to give out? KFC localizes away? their toys. They, they sometimes give out, you know, with uh, licensed characters, but usually they give out with their own characters, like their cheeky, their mascot stuff. Mm, true, true. McDonald's, I don't know what they're up to. You know, when the ponies, pony wave came, we missed it. They went straight to SpongeBob, then they went to Strawberry Shortcake. Mm, true, but sometimes it has to be localized to fit the local flavor. Like, I think they are doing the Raymond. No, no, I, I, I don't know. But Yeah, I lost track. But I think um, now that ponies are localized, maybe if we move closer towards Season 2, we might be seeing them. I'm not sure. When I mean localized, it's like dubbed. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not getting a dub. So, well, we, we just have get to... to it. <laughs> Oh, hey, no, hey, no. Uh, so anyway, um, let's just move on to the next news. And Dan, why don't you take this one? Okay. So if you've liked the pony vinyl toys that are out, the next set of pony vinyls are expected to be out in June this year. If you've been following Norman on Twitter or Instagram, you'll notice he has posted tons of pictures of the Funko vinyl ponies. And if you watched our live stream last week, you would have seen the beautiful vinyl derby sitting right in front of our table. Well, if you notice the video, it's just her head. <laughs> now, but I picked her up and showed the camera because, you know, she's the one that contributes to our aura of derp. It travels through the skyline <laughs> to my house. Oh, boy. And as right now, they only have four sets, which are Rainbow Dash, Derby Hooves, Fluttershy, and Dr. Hooves. Yeah, they don't call him Time Turner. Dr. Hoof is actually written on the box. All the vinyl ponies can be found on Hot Topic. But Franco has not revealed what the other two sets of ponies are going to be for the June release, only stating they will start out as a Hot Topic exclusive. So we're allowing them to make the announcement as to which ponies will be next. So stay tuned to Hot Topic. Links can be found in the show notes. You can look over at Funko's Facebook page. The links are there. And as well as the bonus, a review of Fluttershy and Dr. Hooves by the big boss of Equestria Daily, Sir So, Norman, do you want to add these two to your collection? This random unknown ponies? Think of it like a blind bag. Big <laughs> blind bag. Hell yeah. I, I've been collecting, what, Rainbow Dash, Derpy, Fluttershy and Doctor. So, <laughs> I, I think I won't stop until I get all the main six. <laughs> Let's just hope it's not Princess Skylar. Oh god. Who is she? I don't know. It's the thing. I expected to find out by the end of season three and that has not happened. Yeah. But anyway, um, like, um, some people have been speculating that um, it could be a unicorn next, but... That's a good point, because we haven't had a unicorn yet. Yeah, we, we have an earth pony, but that's a male. So, I my prediction is going to be the next wave is going to be either Applejack or Pinky for the main six. And for random, it could be um, Big Mac or Vinyl. Or Granny Smith. Oh, why Granny Smith? Oh, no. Granny Smith is awesome, all right? But then, I've noticed some things that Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy, they're, they're kind of shipped together a little frequently. And as so is Derpy Hooves and Dr. Hooves. They're, sh- they're shipped quite frequently. So, my prediction is the next batch might be another uh, fan and ship, like Bon Bon and Lyra. What mm-hmm. do you think? My that, That's um, fan thinking. I'm thinking of more of production because you have three Pegasus right now. And they come from the same mold, but different hair. So that's ah, one okay. cost Makes saving. Sense. And when I when I say Big Mac, it's because of the mold too. But Big Mac's a big husky guy, so they could go for Brayburn. Yeah, that will work. I mean, Big Mac has his harness. That's the thing that makes him unique. Yeah, it's, the, the doctor has his tie. So um, adding accessories won't be a problem. But hmm, Big Mac is big, so could not be him. But... Um, my prediction is just going to be maybe an earth pony and maybe a unicorn because they need to kind of flush out all the main six. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So maybe vinyl or rarity or maybe... I would love to see a rarity, actually. No, I mean, the hair for... For the, the sake of the main, yes. Yeah, but for the hair for Fluttershy, oh my, that, that's awesome. 
Yeah, definitely. I, I don't know how they're going to do the mains, but this is going to be a real pleasant surprise. Oh, they show accurate. They show accurate. <laughs> yep. And that's what we're all looking for. And what are those plushies we talked about last week? Um, the Fort Dimension Entertainment? Ah, uh, yes, that one. I'm also looking forward to those. I, I wonder which one's going to come out first. We talk about it, right? It's going to be Twilight Sparkle. No, I mean, when is it going to come Ah, out? yeah. Um, I don't remember. I said That's something and I don't remember. But anyway... Um, so, my memory. See, there be travels through the phone line. <laughs> Indeed. So anyway, um, let's move on to the next news. And in the next news is Mimobot Pony Flash Drives are out on sale. A while back, we mentioned that Mimoco, the company that are responsible for the Mimobot flash drives, are going to produce My Little Pony flash drives. Starting from now, you can get them at the Mimoco website. And there are three ponies to choose from, and they are Twilight Sparkle, Rarity, and Rainbow Dash. The starting price for one of these flash drives starts at $19.99 and can go up to $129.99. The size for the flash drive starts at 8 gig to a max of 128 gigs. All of these flash drives will come preloaded with exclusive content. These contents are icons, avatars, wallpaper, screensaver, and many more. Links can be found in the show notes. And so then, what have Thou need to say about Mimo Co brand flash drives. Do not want. Those things look creepy. Indeed. I don't know. Okay, maybe I want them just for the screensavers and wallpapers inside. Because, I, you know, that's what we're all after. I've seen the screensavers and wallpaper design and it's the Mimo bot. <laughs> okay. But as far as I remember, they have comics inside. And starting at, what, 20 bucks for a flash drive of 8 gig? I'd say if you really want to have those exclusive content, get the cheapest. Yeah, might be worth it, you know? Although 128 gig does sound like a pretty neat flash drive to have. Yeah, and also the hefty price. Yeah. And also, um, if you go look at the Mimoco website for the Mimo Bot My Little Pony flash drives, go look at Twilight Sparkle and <laughs> oh, you'll get a chuckle out of it. Oh yeah, I mean you get a chocolate out of all three of them at Twilight. No, I mean yeah, Twilight. seriously, Twilight, the back. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen the back yet. Oh gosh. Go look at it. Go look at it now. Go look at it now. Seriously. Yeah, I'm taking a look at it right now. I can see the front. I haven't seen the back. It's scrolling down. It's really interesting, like how all these companies are doing stuff, and how they want to make it accurate to oh, a degree. Oh gosh, they had to put the wings there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they right. did it. They put the wings. Dear Princess Twilight, I understand that you're a princess, and I'm happy for you. But heaven's sake, could you put the wings away for one minute? Why are they always out? You know what they say about Pegasi with their wings. <laughs> yeah, but she's a princess. She should really behave herself. <laughs> uh, let's move on to the next one. Why don't you take this one? Yeah, sure, no problem. So, the main six has a new crew member. Yep, the people responsible for fighting is Magic. They received a CND from Hasbro's lawyers, and they stated that they were trying to get special permission from Hasbro to continue working on the game. Unfortunately, Hasbro has not given them such permission that they needed to keep the project running. With every dark cloud, there is a silver lining, and the silver lining in this cloud is Lauren Faust herself. Yes, the creator of French Miss Magic has decided to join the main six crew. She's officially a member there, and her role will be character, concept, and design. And in a comment post that Norman Sanzo made, he asked, The new characters, will they still be ponies or something else? And they reply was, They will not be related to the My Little Pony franchise at all. In short, it's the dawn of a new project, a new project that will not include ponies in any way, and will be something original created by Lauren Faust herself. Links can be found in the show notes. So, what do you think of Main Six latest employee? Wow! <laughs> what black magic does use us to get Lauren Faust on? Well, I guess she or I think for one, Lauren herself was looking forward to this game. Okay, true, true. So you know, to see if something this heartbreaking happen. She probably thought, all right, you know what? These guys work so hard. Let's give them something for it. I mean, Lauren is a nice person. True, true. She's awesome. And I don't know, I mean, like, the whole idea for the main six crew to create a fighting game based on ponies was the love for the show. And they really were interested in the idea. 
And to see them got seen indeed, like that was really sad, especially for most of the crew working for yes. ponies. If I remember right, um, Jason Thiessen, the director for MLP FIM, wanted to play the game so bad. And so did, um, who was it again? Um, Daniel Ingram. Yeah, Daniel Ingram. He, he too wanted to play the game. Like there were a lot of people from the show that wanted to play the game because it looked so good. It looked so awesome, man. Coming from the fans, like, oh... Th- it's, a, it's a true testament to, you know, a love for the show. I mean, if you made something like, I don't know, you started your own manga series and somebody came up with a fighting game for it, I would say that it's probably the ultimate testament as for show love. True, 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 true. But I recently heard a comment from, um, I'm not really sure who his name was, but he said that the reason why Hasbro CND, the whole project, after you, the whole Evo thing was because of how it could garner, garner cash. Because, Potential for money making, huh? Yeah, because even though if they don't take the money and stuff, they were doing it for cancer research and they were, how do I say, not collecting money, but kind donations. of... Donations. They're getting donations. Yeah, donations for the cancer research. But see, the whole thing is if main six were not shown in Evo, or even though they were shown in Evo, they were not um, accumulating any money, they won't get CND because it was just a fan project, a non-profit. Oh, well, I think, I guess where, I guess now we know where to draw the line. Yeah, true, true indeed, I guess. But uh, it was for a good thing. But uh, like I said, in our live Q&A or AMA, it was... It was to protect their rights, license, yeah. and... Uh, and yada, yada. Yeah, yeah. No fun, no fun. Yeah, uh, well, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. <laughs> oh, I haven't heard that one before. The Justin Timberlake quote. Oh. Okay, anyway, let's move on to the last news topic of the day. And speaking about hell, <laughs> uh, more images of Equestria girls. <laughs> uh, I, got, I got a good segue for that, man. If you look at this, just tell yourself it's fan art. Just don't tell yourself anything else. Just tell yourself it's fan art. This is the way to get around it. Repeat after me. This is fan art. I hope so. But anyway, in the recent New York Times article, they were discussing about Hasbro's future and its various toy lines. In the article, they talk about how the My Little Pony brand is turning 30 years old and mentioned the brony fandom and stated that To celebrate the brand's 30th anniversary this year, the company plans to introduce a new extension this fall called Equestria Girls. Uh, Included in the article is a picture of the redesigned Equestria Girls. Links and picture can be found in the show notes. So then, in the show notes, there's two pictures. One is the (coughs) concept design that was leaked out a few months prior to the whole article and the bottom is the one that is shown in the New York Times article. Yes. Uh, take a look see at both and tell me, which one do you like more? A or B? The top one, of course. Yeah. A. God, you sound like an optician, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, blue skin on Rainbow Dash? She's not from Avatar, for God's sake. That I don't mind that much. That I don't mind that much because, like, I, it, it's kind of trying to negate the argument of, oh, Twilight Sparkle should have dark skin. No, Twilight Sparkle oh, should have. Yeah. Like, forget about that. But um, I could accept the color skin stuff. But look at the design for the new concept. I don't like it. And I think you all know why I don't like this one. Twilight, for God's sake, put away the damn wings. <laughs> Oh, that, uh, true. It's like, what are you trying to tell the, the story? What? what? Like, she's, like, she's got like this pair of angel wings when the rest, the Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy don't even have that. It's like she's some sort of goddess right there. Technically, she is. <laughs> but come on, like, in your human form, could you at least be normal? Yeah, true. I mean, if that. you're already a princess of Equestria, now you're going to what, high school? <laughs> you're going to be the boss, a student body president or something? Yeah, true. No, but the thing that I don't really like here is the hair. It's like, okay, I can understand why you want to do the tail metaphor is you have a really long hair and you can make it look like the tail, but it just doesn't work here. Reminds me of Sailor Moon. 
oh hey Sailor Moon even they have long hair and stuff it's not that freakishly long to um Hatsune Miku kind of thing uh, nah even those has even those are better than this actually I, I quite like this idea of doing the hair but what disturbs me a little is why are there ponies in the picture because the first rumours that came out about Equestria Girl discussed that they wanted to make girls to be paired with the ponies to play with the ponies I don't want that to happen. This is just spin off. This is just a spin off. This is just a spin off. It will not affect the main six. It will not be. Moving on to the next topic. Yes, sir. Let's oh. see as it is and let the rumors continue when this, they when broke this show me. comes up. They Actually, broke will it me. Be by DHX? It is. I think it's. I, I hope so. I hope so. Oh, right, because right. For some strange reason, this does not look like DHX's art style in the second picture. The first picture has more resemblance to the DHX art style. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's just say that oh, we got no idea what's going on and you say it's fan art. Okay, let's move on. I'm serious. It looks like some, you know, I don't know, how do you call it? Anthro fan art? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Let's move on. Let's move on. They, right. they broke me. They broke me. So let's just move on. <clears throat> and moving on to the next topic is... Dum dum dum! Email time! Woohoo! Suddenly we have emails. Yay! Email! <laughs> After holy... <laughs> I'm happy. Email. <clears throat> Dear Norman Sanzo, your credit card is about to expire. Please renew it. <laughs> oh, 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 I get that on a weekly basis. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what we're filling our mailbox. So finally, it's good to hear from a human being. Yes, indeed. So, let's read emails. Okay, dear Norman Sanzo, Sergeant Pinky, awesome guest. <laughs> uh, this guy has been listening to the show. <laughs> yes, very closely. In fact. <laughs> what do you think about the Grim Dark Pony fix in the My Little Pony fandom? I really like the Grim Dark stuff, like movies and books. But most bronies hate Grim Dark stuff, and they call me a terrible person for liking horror stories. The fandom seems as especially obsessed of making everything PG. Personally, I read some stories that are grim and dark and don't just focus on killing multiple color ponies, especially Rainbow Dash. Personally, I think the pony fandom needs to be more open-minded. Just because in a story a pony dies does not mean it's going to be canon. Best regard, Darkest Night. Ah, and he's got something to add. P.S. I have a fanfic suggestion. The Creature That Came to Ponyville by Friendly Uncle. Description. A new darkness has taken root in the Everfree Forest. And ponies are going missing. Does Fluttershy's new pet hold any answers? Or is Ponyville and eventually all of Equestria doomed? Well, this is an interesting topic that we don't get to cover often. Of course. So, Dan. Um, if I remember right, you read Cupcakes, right? Oh, yes. Okay, so why don't you go first? Because I'm trying to calculate my thoughts. Alright, uh, well, basically, I get where you're coming from, Darkest Night, in a sense that you like Grimdark stuff. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. You're not a twisted, terrible person. Because I have friends who, you know, some even girls who, you know, they decorate their notebooks with flowers and hearts, but they like playing, you know, Night of the, was it Night of the Living Dead or something. House of the Dead, yeah, that mm. game. You know, so there's, there's tons of this, but... For me, personally, when I watch ponies, I watch it for the innocence of the show, so I don't really like grimdark stuff. But to each their own, you know, I don't go around calling people who make grimdark stuff evil or terribly demented or anything like that. I mean, I did at one stage, but I grew out, I grew out of it. And uh, you said that, you know, the fandom seems to be especially obsessed with making everything PG. Norman is obsessed with making this podcast PG, but still, sometimes we just want to make it enjoyable for everyone. And as I said, I watch it for the innocence of such a show because you know these ponies are not into killing each other in their canon form you know they're not they're not obsessed with you know beating the crap out of each other although, although they have gone in that direction a couple of times i believe that i'm not the only one with this sentiment and some people out there are like you know let's all enjoy this show for its beauty of being nice cute and innocent so norman okay. what about your thoughts well the thing is that in any fandom you're gonna have multiple characters and i don't mean characters as in the show i mean characters in real life You'll have those crazy people, you got those mentally sane, you got those socially awkward people, and you... I won't say that, but... And you'll also get those people who are into more matured stuff. So, for you liking Grimdark Pony Fix, 
it's normal. It's normal. I I wouldn't say you're a bad person. It's just that you have interest in other how how other we, genres of, mm. because we're not expecting everyone to like the flowery. You know, every day Fluttershy wakes up, a bunch of butterflies come and greet her. Good morning. You know, not everyone likes that stuff. True, true. But um, my point is, it's normal. It's normal. I'm betting that you read a lot of grim dark pony fix and. Most of them could go to the extreme and most of them are just there for reasons that include blood and... I won't say gore, it's just blood, like pony getting hurt from fighting. Yeah. And sometimes the tag system on Fimfic requires you to add that just because there's a limit of blood or gore. Mild gore, I mind you, but still gore. I wouldn't say that you're a bad person. As for the fandom, making everything PG, well, <clears throat> that's simple because imagine this. A little Timmy or tiny Tina goes online to look for pony content and suddenly she heard about Fallout Equestria. Now maybe not Fallout, maybe even Cupcake because that sounds like a more alluring idea. Could be, but let's just go for Fallout Equestria because it's the most popular one. <laughs> he or she types in Google and click images. And let's just say Tiny Chocolate. Tina or Tiny Tim's parents forgot to turn safe search off. You yeah. turn safe search on, not off. You turn safe search off, off, you're asking for trouble. Yeah, but still, <clears throat> just imagine that. And all of the pictures can come out and stuff. I mean, um, the reason why is just people want it to be as it is. Maybe funny or mature in other stuff, but still... They want everybody to have a good time. Like Dan said, um, people watch ponies just because of its cuteness and its... What do you say, Dan? Innocence. Innocence, Innocence. yes. I, I wouldn't say um, it's a bad thing for you to like grim, dark pony fix and stuff. And you're you're not a terrible person. Seriously, you're not a terrible person. Um, I'm currently reading this one fic that is more matured. But it has a really interesting story, but I won't recommend it on the show because uh, in its nature, it's really mature. In a way, the what you're saying about this, I actually view it from another angle. And I think that this actually does reflect on how so-called mature the fandom is because you don't really find this much kind of content in other fandoms. In, I mean, I think My Little Pony is the co- fandom that churns out the most content like, in a short period of time. And in a way, to show, to see that content such as, you know, grim dark and not to say grim dark, just darker kind of fix where, you know, there's killing or there's death involved. Uh, it it kind of shows that, you know, the audience is mature and there is you know, living proof that bronies exist. You know, there's not like a bunch of five little teenagers in America who's making a big thing out of it. True that. True that. It's based on whatever you're interested in. Like for me, I said multiple times that I like the card game Card Fight Vanguard from Bushy Road, and technically not related to ponies, but still, if I had the time and dedication to start working on a pony version of it, <laughs> you'll see it around. But honestly, it's just that with such a huge fandom, you are bound to see multiple skews of genre and interests. Definitely. And I agree with you that the pony fandom needs to be more open-minded because if somebody actually came up to you and told you that you are a terrible person for liking horror stories, and if that person is from the fandom, really, I would like to say that person really needs to grow up because, you know, they say that we're a kind of fandom that is already a minority. And we were asked the question last week in an interview whether we felt that we were under any social stigma. And definitely we are because it's not normal for guys my age who are supposed to be sitting in an office and working, instead I'm watching ponies on my desktop computer at home, that, you know, it's it's something that makes it seem... I mean, I have a job, by the way. <laughs> and uh, it seems that people out there need to be open-minded to be able to accept people like us as friends. So we should carry on with the karma and not, you know reject members of our own fandom unless they really are going out there and killing people aside from FOB question of course <laughs> uh, you know un- unless you know our fandom is really going out on a bloody massacre somewhere or something true, there is true. nothing that no grounds to call people someone terrible we also need to learn to accept and learn to be more open minded I agree with you on that true 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 so like you said that uh, we need to be more open minded and stuff think about it this way if you have a friend that's into all those anime fluff stuff, like all those... Obscur- furry in a way? 
No, no, no. Anime, upskirt short kind of schoolgirl oh. things, or all those standard animes that show upskirt things. You know those normal animes these days. Think about it this way. People that like watching freaky animes like that, and you're judging them because they like to watch those kind of animes. Yeah, now turn it around. Imagine them watching ponies and you're judging them. Uh, exactly. It's it's. Uh, I mean, we're not accusing you for any of that, but still, it's just the the kind of karma I think we should ex- expect. And yeah, true, true. The way uh, that we have friends, like you know, you're writing to us. You're we consider you a friend, you know, and we definitely accept you as a brony because heck, we're bronies ourselves. So, for us to be able to you know talk to you as a brony is something that we've already offered, put upfront our acceptance to you. I mean, we're not saying that you don't appreciate us or anything, but. For anyone who just tells you you're terrible, who's from the fandom, it's like, look here, you've already had people, you already maybe have friends who don't accept you in real life, maybe that's a whole different game, but if people accept you for what you like, well, it's time for you to, you know, pay it forward, pass it on. True, 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 true. And well, I think before we bore people with our philosophy on the Brony fandom and what we think about it, and let's move on to Darkest Night's fanfic suggestion, The Creature That Came to Ponyville by Friendly Uncle. And I know Friendly Uncle's writing. Um, he did a really good story. Um, the one I read, listen, was um, Fluffershy. Um, I, I would recommend it because Bronyville is... Um, how do I put this? I recommended a clubfic by Spike and they were raising an eyebrow. And that one was also... Mm, Oh, that was by Friendly Uncle as well? No, that one was by someone else, but Friendly Uncle's writing for this one is... Uh, I'll just have to say, um, go to Fimfic and type in Friendly Uncle, and the creature that came to Ponyville seems like a really interesting story. Uh, it's complete teen and gore, like how um, Darkest Knight likes his fanfic. So, I think it's worth a read. I don't read much fanfics, but since you suggested, I think I'm just going to download this and check it out. And by looking at the picture, it's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, it, it, although it does sound very familiar that there's like some, it's, it's like an adaptation of some film. I just can't pinpoint which film it was. Mm, maybe that something came out recently? No, it would be something quite classic, in fact. Mm, could be, could be. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And once again, thank you, Darkest Knight, for the email. Do send us more if you have any questions. Or anything you want to ask us, or berate us with stuff that we might gotten wrong. Uh, so anyway, okay. moving on to shoutouts. I like to thank everyone that came to the first anniversary MBS show meetup. Um, thanks a lot, guys. It really meant a lot for you to see you guys there, all to the three of you, and dwindled down to only a few people of you. <laughs> <laughs> and also thanks to Adeline C. I don't think that's a, like, I think that's her initials or something. I got no idea. You cannot pronounce that. Sip it. Sip it. So anyway, um, (laughs) thank you, Adeline, for the awesome fan art. Um, If you want to look at it, go look at it in our show notes and we'll add in a link. And thanks to my co-host for joining me today. You're welcome, Norman. I know I said last week that we should take a holiday, but buck no, so many news. Yep. Yes, and thanks to Darkest Night for sending us emails. Like, thank you, Darkest Night. We really need emails. Uh, so, Dan, any shout-outs from you? Oh, yes, definitely. I'd like to shout-out as well to everyone who came for the meet-up. And uh, a bigger shout-out to especially those who voted for the MBS Show Awards because you spoke and the people who won, congratulations to all of you who won awards. For all of you who didn't win awards, well, better luck next year. And, you know, don't give up because... If you're on our show, you have an opportunity to win. True, true. By and just also, coming on as a guest, you'll already be nominated. <laughs> yep. And also, I'd like to shout out to Norman. And here is a fun MBS show fact. Norman has not missed a single week for the MBS show since its establishment on the 25th of February last year. Not a single week has been missed. If you have not been noticing, you know, there's some weeks when I'm not, not around. There are plenty of weeks when the other show hosts are not around. But Norman is there every single week without fail. True, true. Even though if I'm not hosting or I'm hosting or somebody else is hosting, I'm always there. Who else is going to play the electricity bill? Exactly. <laughs> you know, and that's why he just lost his power because he can't afford it anymore. 
Uh, don't it's bring it up. So don't bring it up. One year. Don't bring it up. Oh, boys. Yeah. Anyway. We will ask for donations, but we're not that kind of people. Uh, and if you're hearing the connection, I'm using Sorry. a 3G now. Yeah, uh, so, you know, those few weeks when I was on my... Actually, no. You're recording on your MacBook. Nobody can hear your bad connection. No, no. You were derping like a robot just now. Oh, okay. So now it still seems like my fault, even though it's your fault. <laughs> So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshow at gmail.com. And then, private emails. Yep, you can reach Norman at norman at com and yours truly at daniel at com. And you can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show, and I'm at Norman Sanzo. Mine is at St. Pinky, S T P I N K I E. Not uh, Sergeant, by the way, Dark Knight, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, I hope you still call him Sergeant just for the entertainment value. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, and also. Not an FOB question, not yet at least. Uh, anyway, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, and also like our Facebook page. Links will be provided in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. This is Vinyl Scratch, and I'm here to show the bass.
Mimoco, the company that are responsible for the Mimo bot flash drives, are going to produce me My Little Pony. <laughs> There's a lot of me. Stop it. Don't blame me. Uh, three, two, one. So with every dark cloud, there is a silver lining. And in this silver... <laughs> with every dark cloud, there is a silver lining. And in this cloud, the silver lining is Lauren Faust, the creator of Friendship is Magic, has officially joined the crew of Main 6. Her role will be... Car- Shut up, Pepper. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs>